Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and I appreciate it. Um, whew, let's see here. Today we're going to talk about the raw develop filter in Luminar. We're going to talk about the lens tab and the transform tab because um, not my last video, which was about my preset pack, which by the way, if you purchased that, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm getting a lot of feedback and it's all been positive, so thank you. Um, but the video I did before that was about the raw develop fil filter using the adjust tab. And now um, I felt I was uh, sort of leaving something on the table, so to speak, if I didn't come back and talk about the lens tab and the transform tab. So let's do that now. Uh, okay, so I have this photo and again, sorry, <laughs> photo from London. Um, but here's the raw develop filter. It is a raw file. Uh, you can see .arw, which is a raw file format from my Sony camera. Let me get over to the lens tab. I'm not gonna edit this photo. This is not how to edit the photo or tips and tricks on editing. This is a uh, just insight into how to use the lens and the transform tabs in raw develop. And by the way, I'm specifically talking about raw develop. While it's not necessarily different in the develop filter, it does mean if it says develop and not raw develop, it means you don't have a raw file. And raw files are, <coughs> excuse me, um, choking here. Raw files are better. More data is in them and you can push them further if you need to and get away with, uh, you have more latitude in editing or post-processing. That's important to me. Uh, may or may not be important to you, but that's what I'm talking about. So here we go. Uh, there's a number of different things here. We'll, we'll touch on them. I'm going to try to make this quick, but I say that a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't always do it. Okay, distortion. Uh, when you hover over the filter, you'll see the little grid come up. Um, distortion basically is sort of two different things. There's either a barrel distortion, if you shoot with a, like a wide angle lens, um, it'll, it'll look as though the photo is kind of bulging out in the center. Um, and then there's pin cushion distortion, which is the opposite, which means like if you have a pin uh, and you're sticking it in a pin cushion, it sort of pushes the material down in the center. Same kind of thing. Pin cushion distortion can happen with like a long telephoto lens where you've zoomed in and it looks like it's kind of compressed in the center and kind of pushing in. Um, the easiest thing to do is to show you. Now, this photo, I don't look at this photo and say, well, that looks distorted. Um, however, after I make a slight adjustment, I kind of find that it is. So if I go to the right, that's sort of creating, sorry, it's not creating. Um, it is altering, it is, well, it is creating. It's sort of creating a pin cushion distortion because basically you're either gonna be kind of bulging in the middle or in pin cushion. And what you're trying to do is find the spot in between. And so um, I just made a change there. And uh, let me show you the before. And now that you see the before and here's the after, it kind of was uh, some, some wide angle distortion there. Um, I shot this at 17 millimeters, so that's my wide angle lens. So it was kind of wide and so it was kind of bulging in the middle. Let me show you one more time, before and after. So it makes a big difference. And the truth is, until you start playing with this tool, it's hard to tell. Like I never thought looking at this before that there was anything wrong with it. Now that I see it, I'm like, oh gosh. Here's something else to notice, and this is a big deal. And we're gonna talk about this more in the next tab, which is transform. But this tower here, it's called the shard in the background. Let me show you the original. It's kind of crooked, right? And that happens with uh, tall things, especially in the distance when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, they'll often lean, right? That's the before, it's kind of leaning. Now that I've fixed the distortion, look at that, the building's straight. Um, and the verticals are straight in the, uh, in the pub here as well. So let me show you one more time. Uh, barrel distortion from wide angle lens, the shard is crooked, a little bit of bulge in the center that I honestly would never have noticed. And now that I've adjusted the, uh, the distortion, um, they're both gone. So it's a big deal and just, just check it out on your photos. Don't become obsessed because it's easy to do that, uh, but uh, that's how it works. By the way, uh, barrel distortion looks like that. So if I go the other way, I'm just kind of creating barrel distortion. And you can see the shard is now even bending more. Uh, that's not how it should look. Here's the original, and what I did is just drag the slider a little bit, and uh, you can, the grid lines come in really handy because they, you know, if you have any vertical lines, you can sort of line them up and, and get a feeling for things. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of doing that. I actually think that looks pretty good. Let me show you one more time before and after. Okay, that's that. Um, chromatic aberration. This is basically occurs, and, and it's really not very prominent in this photo. I kind of sort of got to really dig for it. Um, so I apologize. It's not a great example photo, but um, I'm sure you've got some, and because I'm not picking on you, 
but it happens to everybody. It's fairly common. Some of it depends on the lens. A lot of it depends on if you have a high contrast situation where um, maybe there's uh, sunlight coming into you, you know, a landscape shot, or maybe there's a picture of uh, a couple, maybe do portrait work, and then th there's a bright light sort of behind them. If you have that kind of harsh light in a high contrast scene, you can pick up chromatic aberration. So what is it? Um, it's basically, uh, and by the way, there's a lot of science behind this. I had to go read to understand the full definition. So again, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I, I don't know some of the technical bits because I care more about the art of it. But um, technically, like the, the light's coming through a prism and then you know the, the light rays are kind of separating and I think they're not meeting up properly and that's causing some of these... Um, uh, this uh, chromatic aberration. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not a scientist, so you'll have to go read about that, but it's something like that. But the bottom line is, and what we care about here, or what I care about, is that it shows up as a little fringe uh, of color on these hard edges uh, where there's high contrast. So I'm gonna zoom in 200%, and then I'm gonna go up here, and you can see a tiny bit, uh, and you know, there's a tiny bit of purple there, a tiny bit of green there. Um, I really had to work uh, to look for it. Uh, but all you do is, um, again, this is the dance that I talked about in that previous video uh, when I was talking about highlights and whites and shadows and blacks. There's kind of a dance here. You have these different color sliders, and basically I generally try to move, uh, the first thing I do is to try to move the slider uh, away from the color that I'm trying to get rid of. And so if there's purple here, excuse me, I may take this blue and yellow and kind of go a little bit to the yellow. You'll see the photo kind of blurs. And you know, that helped a little bit. Uh, you know, there was some purple in here. Let me show you the before and the after. Now, that's moving the photo around because it's also doing the before and after of the distortion. So you know what, I should just fix that. Um, and then I'll move down like this. And now I've got the chromatic aberration fixed and the before and the after. Still a slight uh, difference there, but nonetheless. Um, that's really what chromatic aberration is. It's that fringing. And um, it'll often, like if you got bright light, maybe coming through a tree, you'll see it on the leaves. Uh, sometimes if you're heavily processing a photo, I've noticed it. So the point is, you just, you, you do the dance. Um, and you work on these and you just try to work back and forth. And it's, um, there actually may be a science to how you do it. But for me, it's an artistic dance. And I'm just kind of going back and forth until I sort of get where I feel like I like things to be. So that's chromatic aberration. Not the best example of it, but I'm certain you've seen it either in your photos or elsewhere. And if you're looking to know more about it, there's there's way more stuff online you can read about than just what I'm talking about here. Uh, and then there's D vignette. So many lenses will create kind of a vignette, um, which is you know obviously a darkened edge, and that has to do with the way that the the lens works. Um, you don't always notice it. In fact, I don't really look at this photo and say, God, the lens kind of created a vignette, but um, what you do with de-vignetting is you just drag this to the right, and if you go too far, you start creating a negative vignette or a white vignette, which not a look that I really like, and I'm not going for that. So I'm going to go back to zero, but you know I could take this to 15 or something. Um, and now let me show you the before and after. There's the before. If you look at the edges, they're kind of dark. There is a little bit of vignette here. And the after, um, the light is evenly distributed now. So that's what that does. The midpoint slider under D vignette uh, is, is talking about the center of the frame. Um, the midpoint is that center. And if you go left, you're making, um, tell you what, let me do a lot of this so you can see better. So I'll just crank up the, the amount of the D vignette. Um, let me set this back to zero. The midpoint is the center. So if I go to the left, um, I'm basically creating a larger vignette. I'm shrinking the midpoint. So the center of the devignetting area is getting smaller, which means the uh, the effect of the amount of the devignette slider is getting bigger, right? And vice versa. So if I go all the way to the right, um, it, it's pronounced the other way. So that's that's really all it is. It's simple stuff, uh, but it's important, right? So I kind of liked where I was with that, um, you know, adjustment that I did there, but. Um, that's lens. Now we're gonna jump over to transform. Uh, and this is a biggie. This is great for straightening verticals. Um, if you use Lightroom, there's an automatic um, setting or an auto setting, and that's not in Luminar today. I don't know if it's gonna come in the future, uh, but admittedly, um, I prefer to control it myself because it doesn't always work. I'll often do that in uh, an image uh, in Lightroom to see what it does, and it'll crop it weird and do some ugly stuff. So. 
Um, however, we're talking about Luminar and we're talking about this tool specifically. So transform, as the name implies, allows you to transform the image and it's really about straightening the verticals. Now, just to be clear, under the tools menu, there's a free transform. Don't confuse those. Free transform in the tools menu I would use if I added a new layer with the new sky and I wanted to scoot that sky layer up so that more of that sky and that additional overlay layer was visible in the photo I'm blending it into. Different, different sort of transform. That's free transform. This transform here is all about straightening verticals. So we'll just start. The best way to do it is just to show it. So vertical, right? If you go to the left, it tilts it that way. And if you go to the right, it tilts it that way. So um, it's basically tilting it uh, vertically, right? So what I would do to straighten the verticals, I would do something about like that. And I'm kind of winging it here. Um, and you will see, just like, you know, if I'm holding up you know, let me see, uh, like a piece of paper. I've got this little booklet here. If I if I tilt it like that, you know, the edges kind of come in, right? So it's the same kind of thing you're seeing here. And so to answer probably the obvious question, um, you can fix some of that, but 99% of the time when I do uh, transform on an image, I end up having to crop it because otherwise you end up with this empty gray stuff. You could clone and stamp. I'm way too lazy to spend a whole lot of time doing that because um, cause I'm way too lazy. Um, so anyway, that's how vertical works. And then horizontal works uh, just the opposite of that. So it's just kind of shifting it left and right. And so basically the vertical one is moving it up and down vertically on the horizontal axis. Whereas the horizontal one is moving it horizontally left and right on the vertical axis. Sounds a little weird, but that if you think about it, that's what it's doing. So if I want to switch it that way or that way, I can do that. Rotate is just like in the crop tool. I just move it left or right, and I don't really care to do that, so I'm going to leave that alone. Aspect ratio. This is a fun one because it allows you to sort of squish or expand the photo. If you expand, it starts to give you that gray stuff. Let me move it so you're not seeing the grid too. I like the look of the aspect. I'm creating more of that cinematic, that 16 by 9 kind of look. Yes, you can do that with a crop, but in this case, I'm actually creating it with the entire image as opposed to cropping parts of the image out. So aspect is a cool one and then scale basically just basically in my opinion i just call it zooming you're basically pulling the image towards you or you know pushing it back right so you don't want to push it back i would definitely in this case maybe scale forward a little bit and you know do some vertical stuff or whatever we'll get to that in a second the last two bits of the transform x offset and y offset so let me just show you it's a whole lot easier x offset if i go to the left it scoots it along the X axis, right? Not to be confused with that horizontal and vertical are doing. Vertical is rotating on the X axis up and down. Horizontal is rotating on the Y axis um, left and right, but X offset is moving it along that axis um, and Y offset is doing the opposite. Um, it's doing moving it up or down along the Y axis. Uh, axis, I just keep saying that wrong. So. Here's what I would do with this photo. I would probably start because it was shot with a wide angle and I was kind of, you know, a little bit back. And so what I don't want to do is, let me show you the before, is um, it's not really that bad in this photo, but many times with a wide angle lens, and especially if you're kind of close and you're shooting up at buildings, for example, it looks like they're leaning backwards. That's perfect example of where the transform tool comes into play. So um, you can fix that by sort of moving the vertical slider to the left to sort of tilt it it almost looks as if you're raising uh, as if you were standing on a platform shooting instead of being on ground level um, horizontal i don't need to do anything there so that's a zero rotate i don't need aspect i do i think i'm actually going to stretch it out a little bit um, it just kind of lengthens the photo and then scale i'm going to bring it forward a little bit not a lot it's just kind of bringing it forward in the frame so let me show you what we've done so far there's the before, there's the after. Um, and then you got the X and Y offset. Remember you got how you can kind of rotate there. I'm gonna scoot it a little bit that way. And then I'm gonna scoot it down a little bit back into the frame. And there you go. Let me show you the before. Look at the shard in the background. That's that blue building, the tall one in the distance. Look at it now. Now it's straight or mostly straight. I could probably make it better, uh, but you know we're just friends here, so we're just kind of hanging out and I'm talking about it. But uh, the shard um, looks straight now, 
And before, you might not look at the photo and say, ah, it's kind of screwed up, Jim. But now that you look at it, you probably would. And this is a good time to come back to lens and say, gosh, do I need to fix any distortion or not? You know, maybe a little bit, but notice if I start fixing in that, the shard's now tilting the other way. So probably don't need to mess with the distortion. For me, um, I'll play them off of each other, again, using my same dance analogy, but mostly for the vertical um, adjustments, I can do everything in transform. It's rare that I have a photo that I just move the distortion slider and everything's fixed. This happens to be one of those rare cases, so, you know, yay, I guess. Um, that's how I'd use it, and then I'm done, right? I've got it situated how I like. There's the before, there's the after, and this is, as I said, where I come in and crop. And so I'll just come in here and maybe free crop this thing and, uh, you know, just move around a little bit. I want to keep that doorway in there, but I've got to get rid of that uh, corner with the gray. I think I've about got it. I'm kind of hacking away, to be honest. I didn't have a plan on the photo, but there you go. So the before looks like the building's leaning back. The shard is definitely leaning, and now... You know, I've stretched it out. I probably stretched it a little too far. Actually, it, it doesn't look great. Uh, it probably looks better in some ways. But, you know, now that I look at it, this entrance is a little bit tilted. So the point was not, hey, look at the perfect job I'm doing. Uh, thank God for that because um, I didn't really do a perfect job. The point is I wanted to walk through the tools and talk about them because I think uh, they're very powerful. Uh, this photo, I would actually just go back to this, and I think I would just reset. Um the distortion, go to something like that. I think the verticals look good, the shard looks good, and we went from that to that. And uh, that's how it works, my friends. So two videos ago, I did the adjust tab, pretty detailed uh, discussion about that. I hope that it's helpful. This video is all about the lens and the transform tabs in the raw develop, and that's it. I hope it's uh, helpful. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like my videos, and uh, I'll see you again soon. I'm, I'm going to be traveling next week, and I might just take the week off from creating videos. I've created literally like, I don't know, 70 or 80 videos in the last three or four months. Um, I might need a break. Um, i got a lot of things I want to do, but uh, it takes a lot of work to do these, and while I love it, I might take a break. I might not. I, I don't know. I'm sort of addicted to doing it, so uh, don't hold me to anything. But I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back. If you have any questions, let me know. Hit that like button. And um, see you next time, my friends. Take care. Thanks for watching. And adios.